So welcome, the handout is in the chat box. All your questions could be typed in there. As we go through today, notice we're not on a car. We are in the classroom, but what we're gonna show you is what you can transition into on a vehicle, okay? So today we have, using the launch sensor simulator, if you own a launch scan tool, especially any of the newest ones, we have the Throttle 3 we'll be working with. We'll give you a walk through it. It's not a commercial. This really is very helpful. We've done stuff with other companies as well. And down the road, we'll continue to do different things. Uh, we're going to show you a level 2 Autel charger down the road that you're going to need in your shop if you're working on extended ranges or plug-in hybrids or even EVs. You're going to need that. You know, just like when people come in with a drivability problem and they don't have gas in the car, but if they needed a fuel pump, it would be a, fuel, a full tank of fuel, right? Well, you're going to find people coming in with low charges. We've had that already, and we have a level 2 charger right in the shop. Level 1 takes too long, so level 2 would be the way to go. Welcome, everyone, to the Dorman Lunch and Learn. My name is G. Trulia. I'll be your instructor today using a launch sensor simulator. So we're going to go through it and then actually do some hands-on stuff. So you're going to see it work on sensors and actuators. And you may go, well, why do I need this thing? Well, there are a couple of other sensor simulators out there, but if you already own a launch scan tool or thinking about upgrading to a scan tool, this is a great add-on. They also have a scope that is an add-on. Today, we won't be using their scope. One suggestion I made to them I don't believe it is currently possible, at least I couldn't figure it out, how you can run the scope and the sensor simulator at the same time. So we'll be using a fluke lab scope to show you the signals we're putting out. And why would you use this? Well, you could call your favorite parts store and order a new crank sensor or a new mass air, a new O2, but a lot of times you're just wasting time. Of course, always check power and grounds, but with a sensor simulator, I could actually plug in to that sensor wire and send the signal to the computer. A suggestion I made to launch, I'd like to look at generic, at least OBD2 on the scan tool, split the screen in three. I'd like to look at a lab scope pattern, and I want to see my sensor simulator that will be putting the signal out from. So rather than buying a mass airflow sensor or any component on a car, you know, even actuators, changing that EGR valve, that VVT solenoid, you can activate everything right from this box that we're going to show you, okay? So that's why you'd want to do it. There are, you know, no other reasons. I find this super helpful. Unfortunately, our shop is super swamped. I couldn't get on a car and show you all this. In the future, we may do it with other stuff on a vehicle. But this is why it's there, so welcome again. Um, here's what we're going to talk about. This Dorman Lunch and Learn will cover the launch scan tool using the simulator to substitute sig uh, sensor signals and output controls to test actuators. Many times while working on a vehicle, there may be a question on a part, a sensor, or an actuator. They may not function properly. If that's the case, the use of the launch sensor and actuator simulator can be super helpful, right? Rather than replacing parts, this is the way to proceed without wasting time and just being a parts changer. That is important. How many of you out there use a sensor simulator? You know, there are other handheld ones, my old SST3 that they no longer make. There was SST1, SST2, SST3. It was limited on what it can do. It can put voltage signals out. AC and DC, but couldn't really activate a bunch of stuff. You may have something like the older E-Scope that was able to do that. The new one has some of that functionality, but this thing is by far the, edious, uh, the easiest. There is also something called AutoSim Pro. You've seen us use that in a webinar, I think maybe last year or the year before. That is a handheld device that is pretty decent. It's a standalone here you have, if you already have the tool, buying the module is the way to go. 
So here is the launch tablet we're using. This is the Throttle 3. The Throttle 3 is a very capable scan tool. Um, any of you guys have it? So we see some people did type a Y in. They have a sensor simulator. Anything else there, Doreen, that they're popping in? Nope. And here's the box that we're going to be using here. Oh, yeah, come on. Come on, my little uh, scan tool doohickey here. There we go. So here's the box we're going to be using. That's the sensor simulator. It plugs in USB to the launch scan tool. And when you go into the scan tool, this comes on. We're not going to use diagnose. This would be if you want to go into diagnose stuff. You see CAN bus, output, voltage check, all the other stuff there. We slide the screen over. And when we slide the screen over, we're going to come up with this. And here's where we're going to go. And you can see they have a lot of different functions here. Of course, my pointer is having a baby today. Doesn't like something. Let me... Uh, see why that is okay so the sensor simulator <laughs> it doesn't want to cooperate today there's the sensor simulator we're going to use they have something for tpms they got ados they got the video scope they got the oscilloscope multimeter programming battery testing and they have other stuff here we're going to go into the sensor simulator because that's what today's launch and learn is about now, they have three different types. The launch has been around for many years. They have the sensor, simula sensor, ha, sensor simulator older box, the multimeter box, and the new sensor simulator that we'll be using. We're going to go into the screen, and once you go into sensor simulator, you got sensors, actuators, and then define draw. Define draw is pretty neat. What that is, is there may be a signal that comes out down the road that maybe is not in there. You could draw any signal you want as an output. So we can draw an ignition signal, we can draw a square wave, we can change the amplitude, the voltage height, we can make an AC signal, anything you want to do in case it's not in the menu, okay? Uh, the actuator, this is going to turn on all the different actuators that you want and you could use it I'm going to show you it's not going to have a idle speed type motor that we're going to use off a GM throttle body okay but I'm going to show you we can run anything we can run evap solenoids fuel pumps that they don't have in there you can just about run anything by controlling power and ground and the frequency frequency is the amount of time something happens in a second and you could ask questions, obviously, as we're going through. He has a timing waveform that you can do cam and crank. So if you have a car that maybe is not running, well, if you want to make sure that the computer is actually getting a signal, and maybe you scoped it, you, you're getting a signal maybe from the crank sensor itself, but maybe it's not getting up through the computer, you could plug this in directly at the computer or the wires go into the sensor. Many times when I run a hands-on computer type class, we do that. I disconnect a crank or a cam sensor, and then with a sensor simulator, we can control what the computer is going to see. And the engine at first, if your timing is off on it, may go, <laughs> then boom, start right up. Of course, you can control the frequency, the amount of time something happens in a second. Multimeter, we'll talk about some of the functions there, some systems, uh, system settings. So we're going to go to a demo. And now on the demo, we're going to be looking at the tool. So that's the tool setup. We're going to be looking at a scope. There is the scope setup. And I have a whole bunch of sensors and actuators. So first, we're going to go into sensors. So let me get down here and get into the sensor portion. I got to turn the box back on. Of course, Murphy's Law. The box turned off on me. You can see how that comes up and says our box is connected. So we're going to hit OK. We are going to hit one more time OK. And we are going to go into sensor. And I'm going to hit a magnetic crank sensor. So now switch to the scope, please. There is the signal on the scope. Watch what I can do off 
this, the tool itself. I can control the peak voltage. You see it goes small. I can make the voltage go up. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, depending on the vehicle. If you're on a European vehicle, they like doing peak-to-peak -peak voltage. Peak-to-peak -peak voltage means from the bottom of the peak to the top of the peak, they want about two and a half volts. If we're looking at a older GM car with a module, they only need 300 millivolts to do that. So we could do that. We could also change the frequency. You see, by the way, the number one right here. We could make number one and multiple number ones. That is something that you're able to control with the scan tool and maybe switch to the tool first. That's the beauty of the sensor simulator. I'm doing this. You'll see the little yellow bar on the bottom move. Okay, going to make it all the way yellow to 99%. And we could also change frequency, go back to the scope. You see the difference in that frequency? You got a picket fence. If we had a hole in the fence, if we have a dropout, this is easier to see than rather than you doing this. When you have this, this is called the signature of the signal. And you can see where number one is. You can see it come up right over there, right? Now, if you had a dropout, when you look at the signal, called the signature of the signal, yes, you can tell the amplitude, you can tell what it looks like, and I'm not triggering here. This is on free run. Free run means it's just going across the scope. I could trigger if I want on number one, but no need to do that right now. If we have a problem with a break in a crank sensor, which is, or cam sensor, or any AC voltage, which is quite common, when you stare at the screen, because there's as many samples it can take in, millions of samples a second, you may not notice any problem here. But if I actually change the frequency, you see this here? If I see a white space hole, and you should see one every once in a while coming across. I'll try to hit hold on it when I see it myself. Okay, so right there's number one, right there's number one. But let's say you weren't looking for number one, or you had multiple holds, and it's not a multiple um, sensor that is going to give you um, a couple of different... Um, not number ones, but a couple of different spaces where the crankshaft on these new ones have more than one spot to actually initiate off. In other words, more than top dead center on one cylinder. If you see a space like this, that means you got to drop out. And you could do this on a fuel injector or any other type of actuator or sensor out there. And if you're not controlling it by your your tool, let me hit run. I could do this with the time on the scope. So right now I am pressing the scope button for time. Let me just drop this down here a little bit. So I am controlling this here. Let me see if we go up just a bit so they can see my finger. And now if I add more time, I can make that picket fence. Okay. So you could do it either off your scope, again, signature to the signal. There is a great number one that locked in over there, okay? And again, if you want to hit trigger, trigger on something and then change the level. A little hard to, to grab that right there, but we can going out of the range and just trying to grab it right there to stabilize it in the middle. And again, depending because it's a generator coming out, it's going to move quite a bit. But that being said, any questions on AC signals? So we go back to, this is a crank sensor, we go back to the scan tool. We could do the camshaft sensor as well. We could do a bunch of different timing here. Go to the scope and they can see a totally different pattern.
Okay, let me move that back up a bit. There we go. I can, I can change some stuff here. And I hit a button, send data. So go to the scan tool for a second. Now you see how that scope looked, right? The scope, go back to the scope a second. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to drive everyone crazy, okay? So I can send data, watch what happens when I send the data. You see how that signal changed? Go to the scan tool so they can see what I'm doing. Scan tool, I have this set here to send data. I'm gonna hit restore defaults over here, right on the tool. You can't see my finger on the scan tool, but to the left of your screen, Restore defaults, so watch what happens when I hit restore defaults on the scan tool. Watch the scope. You see how that just changed it? So you got a lot of control here on what you can do on the scan tool. You can do an ABS wheel speed sensor, and if you go to the scope, you can take a look at it. Now that's an ABS one. If I wanna make that voltage higher or bring the frequency in, I could make that wheel speed sensor send the signal out to the computer for the break-in system. So those are AC signals, and we can do other ones, a knock sensor. Watch the knock sensor signal, and notice how it pops out and comes in. So what we need to do is we could adjust the frequency of the signal. Going to pick the voltage up here. I'm going to drop my scope voltage down. And there you get a knock sensor signal that you can put into a computer. And when this goes into the computer, the PCM should be changing timing, correct? That's the whole idea of a knock sensor is if the engine is picking up a knock, it can retard it. And we're doing this right off the sensor simulator. Moving on to DC signals. So now I'm going to switch the scope to DC. Okay, we're on DC. Going to put a water temperature sensor. We're going to have to adjust our voltage on the scope because we're at 200 millivolts per division. So I'll go up to one volt per division. You can see the, the line way up top here. I'll put two volts per division and move the channel down somewhat. And that way you can see where we're at. Now I can change that voltage, you see the line going up and down? Okay, I'm doing that off the scan tool. Go to the scan tool and you can see this. Now, why would you want to do a negative temperature coefficient? Now they call it water temperature sensor. It's an ECT. ECT, you know, engine coolant temperature. You can do this for IAT or BTS, battery temperature sensor. IAT is intake air temperature. You could do this for any signal that you want to go high and low by simply sliding the bar on the scan tool at the bottom here. Yeah. Oh, you can see the numbers changing. I think sometimes the, the scope, the, the camera stuff don't pick it up quick enough. But you could do that and the line is going back and forth on the scope. Okay. Let's go to a intake, uh, let's go to throttle position sensor. Now take a look at the scope. There's nothing going on there, right? But you see how that line is going up and down? Okay. So we can move the line up and down, but when you look at a throttle or TPS, throttle position sensor, or APP, accelerator pedal position, we're going to need to take our time on the scope. Let me move this down so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to need to do this 
and actually slow it up. When I slow it up, I need to make this waveform actually go up and down. And you see how it's going up and down? I'm going to slow it up more. You see, I can make a little mountain out of it. Okay, I'm doing that off, not the scope. Here's my fingers, right? I'm doing that right off the scan tool uh, module. So I'm sliding that back and forth. So again, all these signals you could make, which is pretty neat. Why would you want to do that? Well, you may have a hesitation. You may have maybe the engine not racing up correctly. This is why you would want to use this. They're known goods. Uh, we got an airflow sensor. So here's a mass airflow sensor. I'm going to have to play with that as well as you go up and more grams per air go through. And for a dormant t-shirt, for a dormant t-shirt, we're talking about grams of air going through a normally aspirated motor at idle and you have a 2.3 liter motor. How many grams per second, the first guy that answers the question correctly gets a dormant t-shirt? So what do we got there? I know there's a bit of a delay, so I'll take a sip of my water here while you guys... 2.3. How much? 2.3. 2.3. Who's that person? That is Glenn. Glenn, please type your email in, and we will get you a t-shirt out. And if you got it wrong, no big deal. So Glenn, please type your email in. You'll get a dormant t-shirt. We thank you for participating. One gram per liter, roughly is what you want at idle. One gram per liter is what you want basically at idle. Now, as you go down the road, you're gonna want more grams per second, and that's when you're gonna see, you see how that line just went up on the scope? Okay, and we could slow that up even more. So when we go from low, maybe you're at idle here, and now you start getting into the pedal, you're starting to get into it, starting to get into it. Pedal to the metal, you're out there speeding, you're gonna get that ticket, and you're gonna tell the cop, G-Man told me to do it. No, no, I didn't tell you to do that. And we'll just freeze it there for a second. So you can see from an idle, we go up, mass air, more grams come through, and if you put this and the throttle position and APP, they should pretty much mimic each other. What do I mean mimic each other? If we add the throttle position on here on two channels, we should have basically, as grams go up, a little before that, you're gonna see throttle position go up like this, okay? So you're gonna see it go up. If you see a dropout in either one of them, you have a problem. Any questions on that? Okay, so let's go back to run here. Let's get out of that. That is a regular mass airflow. We could take any digital signal and do that as well. We'll show you that in a second. Let's look at the oxygen sensor. So now for the oxygen sensor, I gotta lower the voltage and you're gonna see it going up and down. I'm gonna make it bigger here on the, uh, that's too big. So there's our oxygen sensor going up and down. If we want to change the frequency, we can change the frequency. I'm going to change the time base here a little bit. And there's our oxygen sensor going up and down. For the best engine performance for a dormant t-shirt, what should the low number be? We know a zirconia sensor goes from zero to one volt or about 1200 uh, millivolts or so. What should be the low number, the minimal low number you want to hit, so at least get up to the minimal number, and what is the minimal high number you should hit? So let's see what you got. I'll take another sip of water. Okay, someone said 100 MV. I need the bottom and the top. Good try there, Frank. 150 to 850. 
Oh, give that man Pete. Is that guy Pete? Yep. 150 to 850, Pete, type your email in there. 150 to 850, meaning we want to at least get to the bottom to 150. It goes a little lower than that. As long as it doesn't go under zero, we're good. We want to at least get up to 850 or higher, okay? But those are the minimum numbers. Now, for a dormant hat, this is an easy one. What should the low to high time be or high to low time be? What should that time be? Low to high, high to low. Dormant hat. Now tomorrow we have my buddy Swede Owen. Swede is going to be doing heavy duty ABS brakes. And by the way, you'll learn something even if you're not doing heavy duty ABS brakes. We got one what? A uh, hundred milliseconds or one second? What does that say? Okay, the hundred milliseconds is right. And who is that? That's Michael Catawba. Okay, Mike Catawba, um, put your email in there and you get yourself a dormant hat. Very good. Thank you guys for paying attention. Let's get out of the oxygen sensor and go into a couple of digital mass airflow sensors. Show this screen. You're on it. Beautiful. So let's say you got a digital mass airflow sensor. Now I got to change my scope here, put the voltage up a little bit. Oop, bring my camera up. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to change the time frame. Okay, and I still need my voltage up higher. Remember when you want to make the picture smaller? you got to go up with voltage. If you want to make the picture bigger, you go down with the voltage. Same with the time. If you're a scope user, if you add more time, you're going to make it smaller like the picket fence. If you take time away, you're going to make it bigger so an old guy like me could actually see it. Now here's your mass airflow sensor. I'm going to control this by the launch box and we're going to start changing that frequency. And by the way, do you see how it curves? This is typical of a GM mass airflow sensor. So you notice how it's like rounded right here, okay? It's rounded on the corner, the corner there goes up first, and maybe I'll use the screwdriver here rather than my fat finger. So it's not 100% square looking like if I go like this. You see that square? Once we start adding this, you see how this comes in? That's probably good right there. You see that's a little rounded? That is the signature of that signal. And you could change the frequency. Now, when we do this for a dormant hat, and I'm looking at generic scan data, when I do this, what should you be looking at? So what PID should you be looking at as I am changing the frequency of the signal, making more happen on that screen. We'll give you a second. All right, another sip of water. We hate dead air. Uh, do I see anything yet? Okay, so gram per second, hertz, well, that's what you're controlling. I want to know this cause and effect. If I change this, what PID, and you guys are okay, but what PID should I be looking at? Mass at airflow, G dash F. Duty, duty cycle. cycle, no, no. Those are all what you're controlling doing this. When I do this, you can see I'm changing the frequency. When we change grams of air, it'd be like air coming through the mass airflow sensor. What do you want to look at? Fuel trim. Good. Fuel trim. Jeff, put that's one of the correct answers. Jeff, put your email in for a dormant hat. Let's see if anyone comes up with anything else. Time base, MAF. 
And then you have footage? What no. sensor are you controlling in footing? This sensor I'm controlling is the mass airflow sensor digitally. So fuel trim will change. What else may change? Injector on time. Are Good. Okay, so injector on time. Put your email in as well. That would not be in generic, but it would be in enhanced data. Good. The O2 will give you a hat as well. Put Ross and Mark. Mark, Ross and Mark, put your emails in. Great job. Because as you're adding more grams of air, that is a command for more fuel. So fuel trim numbers should change. And obviously, the O2 signal should stay more to the rich side. Very good, gentlemen. Very good. I don't know if we have any ladies on board today, but if you're there, super cool. So we can go to a hall speed sensor as well. So you have a hall there, and you can change the frequency of that hall sensor pretty much the same. So there's a bunch of sensor stuff you can do. We're going to get out of the sensor stuff, and we're going to go on to actuators. So scan tool, we're going to go to actuator. And the first one I'm going to go to, let me get some of this stuff out of my way over here. I'm going to go to this EGR valve. Okay. And uh, there we go. Uh, these, this system comes with this whole, they come with three different wire packages. Yeah. Uh, heat upside down, always drives me crazy. So you can see it has ends on it to plug in mm -hmm. to the scope and the other ends to plug into the component. I have this set up right here plugged in. And what I'm going to do is I am going to activate this from... Go to the scan tool. I'm going to select EGR. I am going to go to my yellow wire right here. I'm going to plug this in. And I should be controlling. Oh, don't die on me now, box. Okay, so my sensor box went to sleep. Now you see that? Go on to the tool. I am controlling that EGR valve. So I can change the frequency of that signal and see if that valve, stay on the tool, and see if that valve is actually working. How am I doing that? Back to the scan tool. I have the ability to control stuff right here. A lot of times you can clean the carbon up on the valve. You see the bar I'm sliding across. So there's how we can check an EGR valve. Now, again, what I suggested, let me take that off. What I suggested to launch, wouldn't it be nice if we could be on the scan tool, use their scope, that comes with this particular launch um, throttle three, and then look at the scan tool because we could see the sense and compare. Without that, this is very good. I mean, again, if you own, how many guys own a launch scan tool out there? If you can maybe type the letter L in and let me know how many of you guys have them. Um, because sometimes I gotta unplug and replug. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna go to an idle motor. Okay. So even though they don't have anything for this setup, I can make this motor actually run. Sure I can. So we don't have that type of setup. Oh, or maybe we do. Well, of course, Murphy's Law. We are not getting the output out of this baby. 
Let me try something here because the box may have went off again. Yes, it did. So here's the box and it went off. So the battery in here is going down. I'm on a battery pack and many times that'll cause a little bit of an issue. I should have I charged it up. Um, I did and then I was away. So you hear that noise? Pretty cool, huh? Little, little Star Wars stuff there. But let's move it this way and see if we can get this thing actually operating. So now you hear it going. The idle motor is moving. Let's see if we reverse it. This locks in one way. We're going to switch to the other way. You see that, how that's, that's bouncing around? So this is a reversible DC motor. You're controlling it, even though they don't have it on their tool, I am on the EGR one. And you see how that went in? So it goes out. I'm sorry. Plug the wire in. We got that. Okay, so you can control many things here that are not even listed on the setup. We have a question, Dory? I do. Okay. How is your scope hooked up to your scan tool? My scope, how's it hooked up to the scan tool? I have separate wires here that go into the top of the scope. And then I have the wires coming out of the scan tool. Right here. They're coming out of the scan tool. They're out of the sensor simulator. They give you all these different plugs. That's how that is connected. Yeah, and you can ask any question that's that's fine. Now what I'm going to try to do is run this fuel pump. So here's a fuel pump. And they don't have an option on here. Let's go back to the list. There's no fuel pump op option there, is there? So I am hooking up my wires. And I'm going to go into one of these. And I bet my box went off again. It did. It did. Like you know, it's it's amazing. You know, I have it all all set up, ready to go. Had it all charged up the other day. <laughs> and I left and uh, it came back and oh well. But I assure you, once you have it charged up, you got hours of use out of it. I always want to make sure things work before we go on because you know it's live it's like what happens in your shop sometimes things just don't work right and i think did it go off again uh, no. it's weak on power oh, wow. oh, and my motor does not want to cooperate and basically what's coming out of these wires here is power and ground. So I'm taking little alligator clips, trying to go in here and run this fuel pump, which just worked before we went on air. Uh, there you go. Just a bad connection. And come on. Okay, so connections don't want to operate. There we go. So you can see that once I get it right, it does want to run. So you kind of get the idea of how that'll work. 
Now, why don't we switch over to an EGR solenoid, um, or EVAP solenoid, excuse me, and we can use anything for that, in all honesty. So here's, let's move the fuel pump out of the way. Here is the solenoid right here. We'll hook it up to power and ground. <clears throat> Excuse me. You hear the clicking? That's the EGR valve going on and off. So we could change the frequency. So you could test anything. The next thing we're going to do is test the fuel injector. So you can see if you have the right leads rather than what I had on that. If we plug in with the right leads, these nice and easy go into the end of what launch gives you here. And let's listen for that injector. Now, I'm going to go out and go into fuel spray nozzle. Hear the clicking? I don't know if you can see the pintle moving in there. Not really. Yeah. yeah, it's real hard to see it. But I'm sure you could hear it. And notice how I'm changing it. Now, caution when doing this on a vehicle. If you use bi-directional on the vehicle, well, what could happen here is you can let a lot of fuel in a cylinder and hydrostatically lock it. So you wouldn't want to do that, okay? Make sure when you're using this, you don't really leave it on for a long period of time. If you took the injectors out of there should be a, a fuel rail thing next to the box behind there near the fuel cleaner. The plastic rail. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Right there, right there, to your right. To your right. Or your left, rather, excuse me. That's it. Perfect. Yes. So here is a fuel rail. We're doing some injector cleaning on... I don't know what this thing is. It's uh, some guy brought these injectors in to be clean. We clean the rail out. So if you want to take the rail up from these bolts here and you put your injectors, which would be like this, connected to it, right? And you can spray the fuel into a beaker. Well, then you would get a good idea what the spray pattern is. That would be a lot better than you just shooting fuel into a cylinder, but it depends what you're trying to accomplish, right? If I connect to the injector, maybe I have a bad driver in the vehicle's computer, and you think the injector may be bad, you could do that. I would also recommend to put a current clamp either around the wire or use a meter in series, okay? So you take your volt -ohm meter. You're going to connect one lead here and one lead the other way to see what the current drawer is of the injector. For a Dorman t-shirt, what should be the maximum amount of current out of a solenoid? Maximum amount of current out of a solenoid while I set up this VVT setup here. Maximum amount. And we'll go to VVT on the scan tool. And I will plug in my power and ground here. I bet the box is going to go off again, but we will. Oh, no, it didn't. Um, Made me a liar. They said it depends on the resistance, 500 MA, 5, 1 amp. Okay. Well, the, always depends on electrical resistance. Mechanical resistance could also be something different, right? I mean, that also can be an issue. We're getting close. Amps, two to three amps, 1.9. Okay, so 
It doesn't look like anyone, uh, someone's real close. 150 MA, the amp of the circuit, 20, 0.20 amps. Okay, so let's go over this for a second. Number one, you have, yeah. Number one, you have a solenoid like this injector for argument's sake, right? So what is the resistance of this injector? Well, when it's cold, this is a regular injector here called a saturated or conventional injector. You're looking at roughly 12 to 15 ohms of resistance. Some manufacturers may say 13, 14, who cares? Somewhere in that range. The higher the resistance, the lower the amperage. You basically have 12 volts going to it. If you did some Ohm's law without any fuel pressure coming right in here, you're going to be looking at anything over 1.2 amps, and you should write this down. Anything over 1.2 amps for more than 6 milliseconds. Now, 6 milliseconds is quicker than I go like this. Look at that. Look how fast I am. Quicker than me doing that. That's over a second. It's 1,000 milliseconds in one second. So when you, you know, supply power and ground to something, you better make sure what side of the circuit you're on. I call that indexing. So what I would do is this connected to the car's circuit on the computer, turn the key off or power button off, unplug it, and make believe these are the wires you unplugged. Then I'm going to take my meter and see what side has power, what side has ground. Why? Because if you do it with a power probe, okay, and you put the wrong power to the side, and this has a diode in it, yes, many manufacturers stick diodes in solenoids. Sachs, Siemens, Pureberg, and Bosch are all German companies that make components for all different manufacturers from European to domestic and Asian, okay? So you always want to index something. Does that make sense? So write this down, anything more than 1.2 amps, 1 1.2, that's 1,200 milliamps, for more than 6 milliseconds is going to burn a computer driver out. Now, if you're on a diesel injector, that's going to have a better circuit. If you're on a GDI circuit, that is also higher amperage. Those circuits are made for it. Otherwise, all the other circuits that are controlling solenoids, solenoids are anything with a steel bar and windings like this. Okay, anything that has low electrical resistance is going to pull high amperage. Now you may go, hold on, Jay, hold on. I remember those TBI, throttle body injectors. They had a half an ohm of resistance. Low electrical resistance equals what? High current flow or amperage. Yes, they did. They had two circuits. One circuit that would be able to pull, if it was GM, four amps, to open it up quickly. And if you were on a Bosch peak and hold, that would pull six amps, and then it would go to the hold circuit. The hold circuit would switch over where it had a higher resistance and limit the current flow. It would be like you and I pushing a car. In the beginning, oh, i got to use a lot of force to push the car, correct? Well... Once we get the car rolling, it's lower resistance. Same thing with an injector. If we had to open that pintle up and we have high fuel pressure behind it or we have a low resistance injector that we want to move real quick, we're going to have to use a lot of current. Once it's open, the whole circuit uses very little current to keep it open. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Let's get back to this and then I got to put my box back on again. That I'm going to plug my box in when we're done to an electric circuit so it's charged back up for the next time. Let's take a peek at the solenoid here. We're going to put this baby on. You could hear it working. You can hear it clicking more. Now, by the way, just because this thing clicks, now you hear how slow it is? I can change that. You always want to make sure oil flow can go through. The screen's got to be clean. You'll get a P0011, sometimes a, a 13, a 17, a 19. 
These go bad quite a bit. I've had quite a few of these short out. If you're working on some bank-to-bank uh, -bank intake and, and exhaust, these are the things to make sure you check out. Now, that being said, let's go back to the slides for a minute before we get you out of the lunch and learn today. So we did the live demo here. Now the sensor simulator box, there's all the sensor information. You've seen all these screenshots actually live, but they're in your handout, the things you can do with them. Here is the zirconia oxygen sensor. You can change the frequency as you see a lower frequency. We did go, you want to be at least 150 millivolts or lower, never under zero, 850 and higher. Okay, and now here's the actuator list. This is what we were doing. This is some of the stuff they have programmed in there. But remember, I ran a fuel pump. I ran other things that they did not have in there because the sensor simulator box could handle it. It's really a nice setup. Each wire tells you positive and negative, which is pretty neat. So you got a whole bunch of the wires that come out of the box, the bundles that I showed you before. Here's the bundle that was on the EGR valve. You got all the nice connectors. They give you like three, four bundles of this stuff. Pretty neat. And the actuator stuff here, here is the turbocharger solenoid. Okay, puts the square wave out. Here is the timing adjustment. You could do cam and crank. You can see how you can change peak voltage on both of the channels, which is pretty neat. That way, if you had a cam and crank sensor issue, maybe not working right, maybe something is slipped in the car and you can send a signal to the computer, you always want to see what you put out if it makes a change on how the vehicle is running or a signal you get back on your scan tool. So we looked at the EGR, the fuel pump, the EVAP, the VVT. It also has a meter built into it. Now with the meter, you can do voltage AC, voltage DC, diode check, and resistance. You cannot do current with it. To you do current, you're going to need a current clamp that they do give you in the lab scope portion of this master kit that I have. So this is the Launch Throttle 3 that has all that stuff in it. Here's the nice thing here. I could draw anything. I'm going to show you this in a second back on the scan tool. I could draw any signal I want. So you can see here, I drew something like a fuel injector, okay? I can draw any shape that I'd like to do, okay? So let's go here to the sensor box, make sure my box is back on, it is, go back, go out of here, and draw a defined setup, okay? So right here, I can take anything, okay? And I could make if I want like an ignition waveform, I could move this in. I could, I could write my name. Uh, uh, get up there. Yeah, it's pretty neat what you can do with this. Now, why would you want to do it, Doreen asked me. Because something may not be there and I want to use a particular signal. Maybe you want to do this on your ski do or something, okay? Or you know, your uh, motorcycle or something that is not set up for something like that. So you can draw something you want. You can use something defined. You can change here. You can see the different speeds and stuff that I can kind of go up with. Oh, yeah, it does show. Everything I'm doing is showing up on the screen. So those are some of the neat things that you can do here. And there's the multimeter that comes right up that we showed you there. You run the, the leads, you can do DC, AC, you can do your ohm meter, you can do capacitance test, ohm resistance, and diode check. Pretty nice, all built in to this unit and at a minimal cost, especially if you own it already. So now that we're, uh, my foot is tied up here. Now that we're all done with that stuff, we are getting close here to the end. Um, there's something real big there on the... Yeah, no. it's, it's time rate, description, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I don't know. 
So that's a pretty long one there, Randall. A little too much for me to read right now. Um, Dorman is having a training event with myself. This is live in PA at ATC Automotive Training Center. Oh, look, I'm using one of their one of their cups, ATC. By the way, it's a great school. My manager came from there. I do a train the trainer down there quite often. It is a really good school with young people coming out into our industry. So on Saturday, Jul uh, no, what day is it? September. September. September, right in front of my face. On Saturday, September 23rd, from 8 to 6 p.m., it's one day. It's not far if you're on the East Coast. This is a great day to come out and see four top great instructors. I have myself. We got Pete Meyer. Pete, you know, formerly of uh, Motor Age, and we still do those Motor Age TST training events. We just did one this past Saturday. Kenny Zanders, and then my friend is doing two classes in Spanish, Oscar Gomez, keynote speaker. He can rub shoulders with Calm Caprietto. He's from Remarkable Results. You get a full day, you come out, we'll be giving some t-shirts away to every attendee. Some other goodies there, some prizes to win. There's a trade show as well. If you sign up before August 13th, it's $199. We're doing CAN communication. Xander's is doing that. Well, $20 off of the 199 Oh, $20 off the 199 Doreen tells before me, August. before August 13th. We have Advanced Lab Scope, Pete Meyer, and I'm doing Advanced Drivability with myself. Oscar's doing in Spanish uh, electrical automotive stuff, and he is also doing, boy, we should have left that in English. Let's see if I can get that. Advanced Diagnostics in Spanish. So... Maybe you got some Spanish-speaking friends that do well. Comes with a full-color handout. You're going to get a breakfast and a lunch and all full-color manuals. Okay. So sign up today. Where do you go sign up? Well, you go to www.dormantraininglive.com. Uh, by the way, on this new website, we will start posting all these videos and much more and running some live webinars right off them. If there's something you like to see down the road, please come out and uh, let me know. You can put that online now. How many of you guys are interested in attending that event? It's really good. We know we get a lot of you people come back on all the time. We do appreciate that. And this is one way, you know, for a very inexpensive price to update your skills, because if you don't update, you will evaporate, right? And today's vehicles are moving so fast, it's kind of crazy. Um, so any questions up there that we have? Okay. If you thought this was helpful, you give me the letter Y. If you thought this was a waste of your time, give me the letter N. So Y if it was good and if it was bad. And we're going to see you next month for a Lunch and Learn. Don't know what the subject will be, but I'll pick something out of my hat. Um, if you'd like to see something, I need suggestions because we've been doing these now for a few years. So there's a lot of different things we did. Where do you find a lot of this information? Well, for now and when I get this video up, you can go to www.attstraining.com under videos. That's attstraining.com. And later on, all these will be moved over to this Dorman Live, uh, Dorman Training Live dot com website okay i want to thank you for your time don't forget tomorrow abs with my buddy swede owen heavy duty we have a heavy duty series once a month as well now sometimes we do it the last week of the month sometimes they're on wednesday and thursday sometimes it could be a wednesday in the middle of the month one a little later it all depends on our schedule when we're teaching maybe in other areas or if we have time to do it but once a month, Dorman Trainer wants to help you make your job easier, help you make more money in the bays, and we appreciate your support. Thank you very much. From New York, I'm G. Trulia. Have a great day. We'll see you next month.